Good morning. This is No Pain, No Game Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan. And yes, he's my dad too. Good morning, Bob Payne. What's shaking on this glorious weekend? Hey, Ryan, it's March, man. It's time for March Madness. You know, best time for college basketball. You got the Grapefruit Leagues in full swing, which means one thing, spring is coming your way. It's going to be warming up in the Big Apple It'll feel like Naples soon. Trust me. Yeah. What do you care, Bob? I mean, you just go from one endless summer to the next. You know, Naples, Florida all winter, back to the New Jersey shore in the summer. I mean, man, oh, man. I think every listener wishes they were Bob. Well, you know, technology is a wonderful thing, son. I got to love it. Got to love technology. You can work from anywhere. Bad news is you can work all the time. So, you know. Yeah. I got I, I to gotta pick a bone with you. You, know, you. you work me like a dog and you pay me like a puppy. So we got to talk about this off air. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about below average returns. We're going to discuss why most investors earn below average returns and how you can mm-hmm. avoid making the same mistakes with your own investments. We're going to talk about the best of intentions. There are many people in our life, although well-meaning, end up giving us very bad financial advice. We break down who you shouldn't be receiving advice from, along with this week's financial propaganda. That's where Bob and I call out the worst news, best news the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And we have our spotlight segment today. We have Aaron Dessen, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management. He's going to be on the show, and he's actually going to review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's get to it. Bob, you know, one of the dirty little secrets of the financial world is most investors actually fail. You know, we've seen a lot of studies over the years that look at the last five years, 10 years, 20 and 30 years, and the average investor has underperformed the market. You know, going into 2018, two years ago, you measure the S&P, the S&P averaged 10% a year over the last 30 years. The average investor did 4% a year. That's a huge difference. In your mind, you know, why do most investors do so much less than the market? Well, the first thing that enters my mind, Ryan, when you go from a 10% return and then only make four, you would think, well, wow, the expenses in that investment must be pretty high. And I know that mutual fund expenses, internal expenses are high, but they're nowhere near 6%. It's got to be something else. Yeah. So I think, you know, you and I in our collective experience, which is what, over 70, 80 years at this point, we've been doing this too long, Bob. You know, we found that there's a lot of what we call money losing moves that we've seen people make over the years that we want our listeners to basically defend themselves against. And a big one is when things are volatile and with this coronavirus, man, things have been very, very volatile. The hardest thing to do is to do nothing. And sometimes that's just the best strategy. Well, that's the thing, right? Doing nothing is a good strategy when doing nothing is the right thing to do. And, you know, it's all about volatility. I don't know if you know this or not, but you know who created volatility? <laughs> the market gods is what I've heard, Bob. That's my guess. Well, it's so true, right? It is the market gods, and they did it for one reason, one reason only, and that's to keep the uninformed poor, because if you <laughs> act on volatility, you always end up losing. So, you know, volatility dictates that you do nothing, even though it sounds like, you know, maybe that's being Pollyannish. It's not. It's a smart strategy. Well, it's hard because we call about, we call the financial news, the financial propaganda news. They just make you feel like everything's so urgent. And if you're not doing something with your portfolio, you know, you're being stupid. And, you know, it's a very hard thing to do is to stay disciplined during these times because the whole world's telling you, you know, you got to make a move. You got to make a move. But you and I know if you haven't made your moves before these things happen, you're out of luck. You know, reactive strategy just doesn't work. Yeah, but you know, you have history as a guy too, right? You know what? History doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. I mean, can you think of any time in your lifetime where the market was lower than it was on the day you were born? I'm going to guess since 1978. Um, no. I mean, the market is much higher than it was in 1978. I don't even, where was the Dow in 1978? It was a lot lower than it is now. And then <laughs> back in 1953, when I was born, even lower, the market never goes down to where it was the day you were born. So if you act on, you know, getting out of the market because the financial media is telling you, oh, this is so different. It's over. You know, the market's going to go down. Think about your lifetime. All the different corrections we've been through. Never has a stock market got back to the level it was when you were born. 
what's the best thing to do when you have this kind of volatility, right? Is again, do nothing. Another way to avoid losing money or a non-money losing strategy would be think about your money as a bar of soap. Yeah, because the more you use it, the less you have. Now, with this coronavirus and all these other viruses running around, you know, during flu season, I've been washing my hands like every 15 <laughs> seconds, right? We're going out, we're running red, out of Bob. soap. <laughs> we're out of soap and I gotta go to I gotta go to Costco every week to get a big bag of soap. <laughs> Well, and exactly. Yeah, the good, good soap analogy. But the thing is, when it comes to your money is, man, you know, the again, the, the feeling to buy and sell a lot, what happens is there's transaction costs every time you do it. There's taxes to be paid. I had a friend that said, hey, I got out of the market right before the coronavirus news came out. I was like, that's great, but you just have a big capital gain. Now you're going to have to pay at the end of the year. That eats away at return because he wants to get back in the market. So he thinks he's being smart. But on the other hand, you're slowly diminishing those long-term returns with all the transactions that you're executing. Uh, you're absolutely right. Why with the, with the uh, 10 year bond now under 1%, you're sitting, you're making zero, right? You're getting a, you know, a quarter of 1% return. It's taxable. Uh, net of inflation is a negative return. Meanwhile, if you just held on to your diversified portfolio, you're getting dividends and interest accruing every single day. This is why Warren Buffett never pays a dividend. And it's Berkshire Hathaway because he doesn't want to pay tax. So you want to do the same thing. You want to hold your investments for a very, very long time, not getting out of the market, which, Bob, leads us to the probably the most important rule here. Never sell stocks in a down market. Never, ever, ever. You know, it just feels like, oh, I got to do something here, right? They're telling me this, this is worse than anything you've ever experienced. I mean, it's bad. And yeah, sure it is. You know, the news is always bad. And we don't know when this thing will end or, you know, what the actual impact will be longer term. But we do know that if you sell into a down market, you take something that volatility and you turn it into a permanent loss. Yeah, it's kind of like if your house was down 20%, someone came knocking on your door and said, we'd love to buy your house now for 20% lower than you paid for it. You wouldn't jump on that offer. You would think, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to sit in my house. I'm going to wait for prices to recover. We don't do the same thing when it comes to the stock market. No, it's crazy, right? Somebody knocks in their house and they insult you with that kind of offer. You just slam the door in their face, go, what are they, crazy? You know, I know what my home's worth. And then the you know, same thing happens with the equity market. You know who never sells when the market's down? And this is who you all think about when we have this kind of downside volatility? A guy named Warren Buffett, right? Do you think he's selling anything right now? Warren Buffett said it best. Be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. And he's one of the wealthiest people on the planet. So I think his advice is probably pretty sound, Bob. Yeah, I think right now he's saying, hey, please panic so I can buy your stocks at a very low price. He says, I love buying stocks when they're down. Which brings us to our last tenet, so you don't make money losing moves, and that is science works. It's been academically proven that a disciplined approach to investing delivers better returns. And everyone needs to do that, especially in light of all the volatility right now. You have to have a game plan and a strategy. You know, it just it really it really irks me to hear this, right? But it's so true. When you have a lower IQ, you outperform people with a higher IQ. Why is that? It's because, you know, you don't listen to every single thing and feel like it's, you know, because it's logical, right? You hear something that sounds important. It's illogical not to act. Well, it is. It is illogical to act. What you want to do is have a diversified portfolio and think of it this way. It's two steps forward, one step back. And that one step back is for rebalancing, not for panicking. That's right. So, you know, a good example is, again, the markets came down with the coronavirus. If your allocation wasn't set correctly already, it's just too late. It's about being proactive, not reactive. That's the kind of science that works. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, that's the kind of game plan I need. I need one that's based on my goals. That's going to get me to my goals, not based on the news and the volatility that's driving me crazy right now. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $500,000 safe for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you. Our famous total financial master plan. We're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture for you. All you need to do is bring those statements in, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. They're probably ready for February. We're going to put together for you your own personalized financial portal where you can get a bird's eye view of all your investments, your entire net worth. And then we can start looking at all those critical components. Everything from income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan for retirement? How are you going to draw down your portfolio? We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio and create an income stream that you cannot live in retirement. 
we're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit hard in the last couple of weeks as the markets were selling off? Are you protected? We're going to show you where all the underlying hidden risks are in your portfolio. We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at expenses and taxes. There's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio you don't know you're paying. And those mutual funds, brokerage products, annuities, life insurance products, we're going to show you where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce costs, and then optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into a total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've been literally working on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you can just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next 10 callers, you've saved over $500,000 for retirement. Well, Ryan, I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But there won't be a plan unless you text or call right now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or all you have to do is just pick up the phone and call 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-PLAN-NYC. Hey, this is Bob Payne, and I'm with my son, Rye, and we're the Paynes of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And of course, that's P-A-Y-N-E. And Bob and I, as you know, are very common sense, practical men. And we want to give you practical, common sense advice for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year. And we give you an update on the new SECURE Act. There's a lot of new ways you can save on taxes. And even, even before April 15th, you can download this document for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish. That's spelled B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020. We give you the highlights of the new SECURE Act, which are new ways to save on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, as the old proverb goes... The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. And sadly, the road of bad financial advice is often no different. So I thought we could talk about some of the people who have really good intentions, but often give us very, very bad financial advice. And the first place I think about can be your family. Hey, Ryan, which one of your uncles do you build your portfolio based on their advice? <laughs> I don't think there's anyone in our family that I would take financial advice from with all due respect. Hey, Ryan, all you have to do is look in your local community. You know, how many new restaurants open and close within six months? Yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't know what the rates are, but isn't it like something like 10% of restaurants actually make it? It's a, it's a very abysmal number. I know that. Yeah, and who gets into the restaurant business? Somebody who is really successful in technology or in law or in, in medicine. <laughs> and they think, wow, I'm really good at prescribing, you know, medication. I must be great at running businesses. And, you know, so when people think they're an expert in everything, boy, I'll tell you what, they got a fool for a client. Yeah, no, no, it's so true. And it comes to financial situations too. Your financial situation is so much different than everybody else's. So unless someone knows all the nuances of what's going on with you, any advice they're giving you can be blanketed and maybe very applicable to them. It might be completely wrong for you. And that's why it's so dangerous to get that advice from family and friends even though, I mean, in, from their minds, they're probably looking to act in your best interest. You know, Ryan, just brings me back to the days when I started back in the mid 70s. My very first manager was a great guy. I mean, really great guy. But the fact of the matter is, he just came to work every day because he had nothing else to do. He had this gigantic trust fund. So I said, you know, <laughs> hey, I knew I'm 21 years old. I need some advice on, you know, what should I put my clients into? I said, T bills. Yeah. I said, you know, they hardly make anything. He goes, yeah, well, they're safe. 
Well, you know, you're absolutely right. Every one of my clients' goals was to grow their wealth net of inflation to get to the point where he already was. So, you know, for me to take his advice based on his situation would have been insane. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a, <laughs> Yeah, I probably had like $30, $40 million in a trust. It's a little bit different than the young guy sitting in the bullpen of a brokerage house trying to make a living. So I get that. The other thing, too, is with friends. Friends are the worst because friends love to oh. tell you about the winners, but not about their losers. It's like the guy or woman who goes to the casino and always tells you about them when they won, right? I mean, it, it's it, friends are the worst at that. You know, Ryan, it reminds me all the time as we sit out on the deck at Ocean City and we look north towards Atlantic City and see all those beautiful casinos, those beautiful marble buildings. And then we have <laughs> these people that come back telling us how much money they won. How do you build these beautiful casinos if everybody wins? And I think now is the worst time because it's like, how many people told you they bought Amazon or they bought Facebook or they bought Microsoft? And you know, if you're so smart and you like to say this all the time, Bob, then tell me your next winner. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, anytime anyone tells you how much better they are and smarter than they are than the market, I always wonder, why don't you have more money than Warren Buffett? You know, if you know more and you can pick winners, well, you know, what happened? You know, why didn't you act on your own advice? And certainly don't give my don't give that advice to your friends and don't take that advice from your friends. Yeah. Well, another seemingly good place to get advice, but actually isn't a lot of times can be your CPA. You think your CPA does your taxes. And look, you would never want Bob and I to do your taxes. I'll put that caveat out there. That would be a terrible idea. In the same light, CPA is not necessarily you're going to give you the best advice when it comes to your money. And a lot of times they give very dangerous advice. Well, they do, right? I have a very good client. They're brilliant real estate developers. They've done that made a lot of money. They got a beautiful diversified portfolio. And, uh, you know, one of them called me the other day and said, you know, Bob, last year I did something really dumb. My CPA told me about this newsletter he gets and, and told me he made doubled his money in a stock called NVIDIA Semiconductor. So I bought it. I said, what happened? He goes, I lost half my money. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's, it's really important to, to separate your church and state. And I think the idea is and this is how we do it for our clients, is you want a team of professionals that know what they're doing. Like with a physician, you're not going to go to your dentist if you break your arm. It's just the same thing, but you want to have a general physician who's able to allocate out for whatever needs you have. So you want to have your accountant, you want to have your financial advisor, uh, you want to have your estate plan, you want them all working together. You don't want them co-mingling their advice. You want them to give concerted advice, but you want to come from the right sources. You know, right, really, it, it, not to simplify, you just don't want your electrician doing your brain surgery, even though it's, you know, kind of similar. Or, you know, you don't want That's your plumber, analogy. you know, operating on your back because he's really good with a chisel and a hammer, right? I mean, the fact of the matter is you want an <laughs> expert who thinks about it and does it all the time, you know, to give you financial advice, to give you tax advice, to give you estate planning advice. You know, it's brilliant. You do need experts and no one is a jack of all trades. You want to get yourself the dream team. And, and I think that's the key. That's what we do for our clients. So they come to us, they get the holistic financial plan, but then we get them to the right accountant to make sure they're optimizing the taxes along with what we're doing and then making sure the estate's set up correctly. That's the right way to do it. You know, you want the whole team approach. That's the new school. The old school is the jack of all trades. Stay away from that. And then finally, Bob, the worst culprits are those financial experts on TV. And we can make fun of me right now because... I do go on TV and talk about finance. The worst. Well, you're not the worst because you, you always give great advice on being diversified. You don't pick stocks. You don't throw darts at a board. And, you know, you don't buy into this negative negativity that they promote on, on TV. But, you know, that being said, stay away from financial experts, right? There's nobody in the world that can give you advice because they don't know who you are. You are a unique individual. You have a unique situation. You need unique advice. And I can just tell you this from, from doing a lot of these shows, it's all about ratings. They're not worried about your financial situation. They're thinking about how can we be the most provocative today to get the most viewership. That's in complete contrast to what your financial goals are. You know, right, you're right. I'm actually surprised they ever asked you back because you talk about long-term investing and strategy. You're the most boring guy I've seen on TV, but I'll still watch <laughs> you. You still, have, you still have your number one fan in me right now. So hey, if you're out there thinking to yourself, you know what, I need to be financially healthy. You know, I've got unrealized losses in my portfolio from my buddies on the golf course, from my CPA, you know, my uncle Joe maybe isn't a certified financial planner like they have at some firms like Payne Capital Management. Well, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next 
eight callers and you've saved at least 500,000 for retirement, you know, we'll create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a financial GPS, just like the one in your car right now that will tell you exactly where you are, but will tell you where you are financially and map out where you're going. And more importantly, report daily on the progress of your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve all of your financial goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid those financial potholes and dead ends that you get with a typical cookie cutter financial plan. In addition, it's going to update your net worth on a daily basis. It'll monitor your progress towards the great goals of life. So you'll always know where you are, but more importantly, you'll know exactly where you're going. On top of that, we're also going to look at all your statements. So just gather them all up, put them in a shopping bag, stick them in a folder. You don't even have to open them for the for last month, right? They're probably down. You don't want to look at them anyway. Just bring them in and we're going to take all that information to be certain that you don't have a collection of investments, that you have a portfolio and you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, income, and cost. Yes, we need to be diversified. It's the only free lunch on Wall Street. I'm telling you right now, most of you aren't diversified. You have the same things over and over in different named investments. Cost, you know, Ryan talks about hidden costs all the time. Well, they're in plain sight. We're going to tell you where to look. We're going to pull that curtain behind and reveal where those costs are hidden and help you to eliminate unnecessary expenses in your portfolio. And income, we all need that income once we retire. And if you're retired right now, your number one goal is to keep it that way. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we're going to answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 45 years. Can you believe it? For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours to achieve your goals, to get from your point A to your point B, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. Don't waste time. Give us a call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We still have eight slots left. If you're one of the next eight callers and have over $500,000 safe for retirement, call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844 752 6692. That's call or text 844 PLAN NYC. That's 844 P L A N N Y C. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the best advice, worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting to help you protect yourself and not make bad financial decisions. Bob, as always, I mean, I probably got like seven new articles in my inbox for me today. I mean, we just have so much information going back and forth. What'd you find this week that was provocative, which was just, we had a call out because it was just so obscene because these financial media outlets can just give the worst advice. Well, tell me what you found. <laughs> it's a long intro. No, Ryan, I'm actually finding nothing but good advice out there because evidently people have been listening to me every week. One article came out and said, you know why there's unexpected moves in the stock market, right? Because they're unexpected, Bob. <laughs> yes, yes. And they didn't even quote me. They just they just stole my line. But anyway, when you're a long-term <laughs> investor, that's the one thing you should always expect, right? Or unexpected moves. I mean, let's take the coronavirus, right? It was around for a couple of weeks before suddenly the market took notice. And, and then bang, we go down 13% in one week. It's yeah. like, okay, why is it taking notice now, right? It's just, uh, there's no way to explain it. And that's why you can't anticipate moves that are, can't be anticipated because they're unexpected. Yeah, well, there's, I was an analyst or somebody that I think quoted earlier this year that there was no stock analyst that projected in their forecast that people would be eating snakes <laughs> and uh, bats and, bat, and, yeah. and create, a, create a virus. And that's the thing. There's just too many things you can't project out to the future. And that's why these prognosticators are just not worth listening to because the unexpected is what's going to surprise you, not the things we know. Yeah, and that's what they were talking about in this article. It's like the, what we we constantly bang the table about is that you have to have a process-driven strategy, right? You have to have a portfolio based on your family's needs and goals, not event-driven because it's a marathon, right? Not a sprint. And by the way, it's not a race either, is it right? 
No, it's not a race. It's not a race. Yeah, the whole purpose of investing is to generate the return you need to achieve your goals. And so I think that was some good advice. And just to, you know, don't feel bad because suddenly, oh, I knew about the coronavirus. I should have acted on it. No, absolutely not. What you should do is just make sure that your portfolio is designed to achieve your goals and dreams in your lifetime. And the other side of this coin, too, is this is an opportunity. In fact, uh, you know, a couple articles I was reading this past week. What we forget is when the market goes down, the yields go up. It's your future retirement income is actually now on sale. I mean, you can pick up stocks now and you're getting even more cash flow than you would have gotten if you bought the same companies a couple weeks ago. So right now, if you're building your portfolio for retirement, the cash flow on stocks just went up. In fact, we had 69 companies in the past couple of weeks raise their dividends. So even with you hear interest rates are going down. The 10-year treasury now is trading at 1% or below. Stocks right now just became more cash flow rich. And that's so important when you're building your portfolio for retirement. You have an opportunity right now to take advantage of that, especially if you're building your portfolio for retirement where you're going to need income and cash flow. There you go again, Ryan, the dean of common sense, just talking uh, about things that uh, have consistently worked over the last 100 years. Yeah, did you ever notice that when you have a, um, even when we had the Great Recession in 2009, that uh, you know, people didn't stop using their brand name toothpaste, right? They they always stuck with the consumer staples that they always went with, and that's why these companies, you know, have been raising their dividend for 50, 60 years in a row. You know, yeah, okay, so the yields are better now, but people say, oh, what if they cut their dividend? Well, if you didn't cut your dividend over the last 60 years with all the volatility you have, I don't think a, a virus having a short-term impact is going to make you cut your your dividend at this point, right? Well, the great irony is it's actually going the opposite way. And in fact, you know, you put up one of our portfolios, our large cap value portfolio right now. We just went through all the top names. JP Morgan, they've increased their dividend for eight years in a row. J&J, 57 years in a row. Procter & Gamble, 63 years in a row. Intel, five years in a row. Uh, AT&T, 37 years in a row. And the list goes on. Like, if you're trying to build a portfolio income for retirement, Here's your shot to do it. You know, this is the opportunity. Don't wait because right now you've just gotten a gift from the gods as an investor. Well, the other side of that, right, is your bond portfolio is at an all time record high because as interest rates went down, your bond portfolio went up in value. So you have, you know, bonds at all time highs and you have stocks that are on sale that are paying you the income that you're going to need, you know, to continue to stay retired or to retire when you're ready. Yeah. So there's no better time to build an, a portfolio for income for retirement. I just love that line, but your future retirement income is on sale right now. You've got to take advantage of it. You know, another article I found this week, Bob, and you and I, as our listeners know, we don't like mutual funds. You know, you're nah. typically too high in costs. They're very, very tax inefficient because they have to pay out capital gains every year. So whether you like it or not, you're going to pay taxes on them every single year. I don't know why anyone would want a mutual fund, but the news actually gets worse now, Bob. Oh, how's that, buddy? Well, the other thing is these mutual funds do a lot of buying and selling in their portfolio every year. In fact, they may sell 100% of their portfolio and buy a new portfolio every 12 months. And what's I mean, that's crazy. I mean, it's like it's like they're churning their own account. Yeah, and your account because if you own the mutual fund, you're getting your money churned, but worse, what the statistics are, that actually adds a cost of another 0.3 to 0.5% a year of expense. So if you're already paying 2% on a mutual fund, you're probably paying more like 2.5% when you start to factor in all the trading costs that you're incurring that you don't even see. So it's like going out and buying a portfolio of dividend stocks and saying, you know what, I just want the stocks. You can keep the dividends, right? It's like you're wiping out that, that yield just with the expense. And as you know, what, half the return comes from dividends over, your, over the lifetime of the investment? Yeah, well, it goes back to our analogy earlier in the show. Your money's like a bar of soap. You know, you, know, you don't want to you don't want to keep moving, and all that friction of moving it diminishes your return, and that's exactly what's happening in a mutual fund. So you got uh, you know, so if you're panicking and buying and selling, and then your portfolio manager, and mutual funds, panicking and buying and selling, and then the IRS comes in every year and says, "Oh, you took some gains this year, even though your portfolio is down." They take their piece. How does anybody in the mutual fund ever make any money, right? <laughs> I think the portfolio manager does, and that mutual fund company makes a lot of money, but that's not a good deal for you. And if you're thinking to yourself wait right a minute, now- Wait, what you're telling me is that two out of three isn't good ads, the mutual fund manager made money, the mutual fund company made money, and the investor lost? That's two <laughs> that's, out of that's, three. That's pretty good in Vegas. 
it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You just got to be on the right side of that trade. If you're thinking to yourself right now, I own mutual funds. I don't know why I own mutual funds. I want a low cost portfolio that's going to get me to my goals. I want to know about getting my future retirement income on sale now. I need to build an income portfolio for retirement or an income game plan for retirement. Here's your shot to do it. We still have six slots left. If you have over $500,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic retirement review where we look at everything. All you need to do is bring those statements in, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data, all your investments, and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you can view your entire net worth at a bird's eye view. And we can start to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at things like diversification. Did you get hit hard when the market sold off in the last couple of weeks because of the coronavirus? What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about that you're sitting on? We're going to show you where all the hidden risks are and show you how to protect yourself for retirement. We're going to look at income. Income's on sale right now. Do you have an income plan for retirement? How are you going to pull from your portfolios when you finally do retire? Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio, build a game plan so you have an income plan for life, and then we're going to look at fees and taxes. There's a lot of hidden costs in these portfolios. Those mutual funds, they have so many costs. They're doing a lot of buying and selling you don't know about. We're going to look at annuities, insurance products, brokerage products. We're going to show you where all those hidden costs are, show you how to reduce those costs on your portfolio, then optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket. You want to tie it all together and want a total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 844 P L A N N Y C. If you're one of our next six callers, you've saved over 500000 for retirement. Brian and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. Or simply call 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 P-L-A-N-N-Y-C. Hey, come on in. Come in and see us. And now you'll understand why I'm Bob Payne and I like hanging out with my son, Rye. You'll get a chance to meet him. And you'll see that we're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain, financial radio. And Bob and I, as you know, are simple men. And we want to keep it simple for you. That's why we put together our latest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020. Some things you can still do before April 15th for 2019. And the new SECURE Act will give you all the highlights. There's new ways you can save on taxes this year. We show you exactly how to do it. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020. And we give you the highlights of the new SECURE Act. A lot of things you can do before April 15th. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Go to bebullish.com. You can get our show in podcast form. You can subscribe to the show. You can learn more about our firm, Payne Capital Management, spelled P-A-Y-N-E. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real. But check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com and see a really handsome picture of Bob and myself. And every week, you can catch myself and many advisors at Payne Capital Management on all the major networks, everything from Fox Business, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, with our latest thoughts on the market, the economy. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us directly, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help with those questions today, we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving. Dan, what's shaking, my man? Hello, Ryan and Bob. I am looking forward to St. Patrick's Day coming up. I've already got my green on. All right, man. That's uh, You're well in advance. I'm impressed. Yeah, I like to celebrate that one. 
We got some. Well, uh, Ryan, and I, well, Ryan and I always, you know, enjoy St. Patrick's Day because we come to it honestly with our cheap Irish jeans. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> No sun for us. <laughs> no, no. I'm the same. Uh, we got some great questions in the mailbag today. Our first one is from Randall in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And Randall says, Bob, I haven't decided on a specific retirement date yet, but hopefully it will be sometime in the next four years. With all of the recent market volatility, should I just move my retirement savings to cash until everything blows over? You know, Randall, you're you're making me nervous. I mean, you don't know when you're going to retire. You want to come up with a strategy that sounds like it's emotionally based, not scientifically based, event driven, not process driven. You know, Rye, Randall sounds like he needs a lot of help. He sounds like the anti-pain capital management strategy. If anything, the volatility right now is probably a great time to start looking to allocate your cash because again, retirement income's on sale. It's amazing. You could really optimize your portfolio for income right now. I think Randall's missing a big opportunity, Bob. Well, he really is, right? Because, you know, as uh, you always say, as cash is trash. And the reason is it doesn't pay you any return. And then when you net out the two real big hidden enemies of retirement taxes and inflation, you know, he's actually guaranteeing himself he will fail. He'll go backwards. So you just can't sit in cash. You've got to have a strategy with a positive return. And from an investment standpoint, everyone's focused on the stock market, but I would say the most significant thing going on right now in the markets is the fact that interest rates keep coming down, and that's going to keep marginalizing your retirement because now a money market fund is probably going to get paid closer to 1%, and you're paying taxes on that 1%. That's your biggest risk right now. It's not the fact that the market's down a little bit. It's the fact that you're getting nothing sitting in cash, and it's worse than it's ever been. Well, you know what happens in, in an environment like this? A lot of you will go out there and buy bond funds, which sound good. You know, you've got experts picking yield to give you a, a better total return, but there's nothing they can do about the market when interest rates start to go up. I mean, you could lose 20% in one year in a bond fund right, right, right now, right? Thinking that you have a safe investment. You're not safe. I think that's probably one of the most underestimated risks right now in your portfolio that you're not looking into and nobody's talking about it. You got to be really careful about how you own your bonds right now because- the other side of the coin is at some point, interest rates may go up again. And when that happens, bond prices go down. And it's like what Warren Buffett once said, when the tide goes out, you can see it's been swimming naked. It's so critical that you own your bonds the right way right now. You know, right? everybody loves a bargain. And when things go on sale, you know, at your supermarket or you're at your department store or wherever you like to buy your favorite things, you know, you celebrate when there's a sale. You, you very infrequently get a big sale in the stock market. You very infrequently get a correction where there's an opportunity to buy bargains. So it's not a time to panic. It's a time to celebrate. Time to deploy cash. Thank you, Randall, for writing in. Our next question is from Annie in White Plains, New York. Annie says, Ryan, I want to put in a screened-in porch, but the only way I could pay for it would either be taking an extra $20,000 out of my IRA this year, and I'm already taking about twenty five k for my regular income from there, or taking out a home equity loan to cover it. Which is better? That's a tax question. It might be actually a very good time to take a home equity loan out just because rates are so low. We just talked about interest rates coming down as a borrower. It's a very good time to do it, but it really depends on your tax situation. And this is, again, we talked about this earlier in the show. That's why you want to have your tax plan and your wealth plan put together because I would talk to Annie's CPA and look at what makes more sense because if you're in a low tax bracket, maybe it doesn't matter to take another 20000 out of your IRA, but that's a portfolio decision based on taxes. Yeah, on top of that, Annie might have a 401k, right? We can actually borrow against it for a short period of time, which would save her on paying taxes. So this is a very complicated question because we don't know enough about Annie's tax situation. And, you know, taxes are like, you know, trading your accounts, like that bar of soap, right? Taxes take a bar of soap down very, very quickly. You got to be real careful on how you handle your principal in these volatile times. Yeah, and it's so critical as you're thinking about retirement or retired now is structuring your portfolio for taxes. There's just so many little things you can do to optimize it so you don't whittle that bar of soap down. I'm really loving that analogy today, Bob. You know, I'd say a good majority of what we do is just structuring your portfolio for taxes so that when you take it out in retirement, it's the most tax efficient way. It's such a big part of the whole retirement planning process. Well, you know, Rye, you always say it. Money you save in taxes is just as green as the money and return you make in your portfolio. So, you know, the, the words of the king of common sense, don't uh, pay unnecessary taxes. Absolutely brilliant. 
Good place for the offer. Hey, Rod, you know, I got a question for you. On a scale of one to 10, you know, where would you rank Randall and Annie in terms of being financially organized? I got to say, there's a lot of work to be done here. I'm not feeling very benevolent today, Bob. I'm going to give them both a hard two. They've got a lot of financial planning to do, a lot of financial reckoning to do. Hey, Ryan's not feeling benevolent today, and I don't want to pick on all of you, but on a scale of one to 10, what do you think Ryan would give you right now in terms of being financially organized? Or just take somebody who knows you even better, your spouse. Where would they rank your financial organizational skills? Are you a 10? Well, why wouldn't you want to be? And if you do, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next five callers and you've saved over 500000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a financial GPS. Yeah, no different than the one that's in your car, which will tell you exactly where you are, but only in this case, tell you where you are financially and map out where you're going and report daily on your progress of your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and create and map out the best, most efficient route to all of your goals, net of taxes, net of inflation. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you avoid those you know, financial potholes and dead ends that you get with a typical cookie cutter plan that some financial planner puts in the mail. In addition, we're going to update your net worth on a daily basis so you'll know exactly where you are, but most importantly, you'll know where you're going. In addition, Ryan and I are going to take all of your statements, you know, pick up the phone, make an appointment, stick those statements in a shopping bag or put them in a folder. We're going to break it down into an easily understand strategy to be certain that you have the three key elements of a portfolio. Number one, are you diversified? You know, most of you have a collection of investments that don't help you to achieve your goals, that take on more risk, that suffer from the volatility we've seen in the markets. We want to be certain that you're diversified across asset classes and within those same asset classes. We want to look at costs and fees. Yeah, they're hidden, but we know where to look. We have x-ray vision. We know exactly where they hit you with those fees and annuities and in mutual funds and in managed portfolios. We want to take those costs down so you have a better experience net of cost. And lastly, income. We all need that dependable, repeatable income stream when we retire. We need to fill that gap in retirement with a dependable, repeatable income stream. Ryan and I are going to help you build that. And if you're retired right now, you have one goal, and that is to stay retired. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we answer that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for close to 45 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. We still have five slots left. If you have over $500,000 safe for retirement, that's 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get that second opinion. Just make sure you're on track for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. <laughs> It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And of course, that's P-A-Y-N-E. And Bob and I, as you know, try to give every week just common sense, practical advice for you. That's why we put together our latest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020. And we give you the highlights from the new SECURE Act. There's some new ways to save on taxes this year. We give you all the highlights of that. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B U. L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. That's five ways to save on taxes in 2020. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invested. And we give you all the new highlights from the SECURE Act. And there's some things you can do before April 15th. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now... We have a very, very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, the man, the myth, the legend, and the best voice for radio, Mr. Aaron Dessen. Man, that was a good intro this morning. That was I've never had an intro that good. Thank you, Rye. 
really make my day here. Good morning, guys. <laughs> that was so good, Aaron. I might change my name. <laughs> uh, he's, he's never that kind to me. Never benevolent. Yeah, two Aaron Destins in the firm. That won't be confusing at all. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Aaron, this is our spotlight segment. Every week, what we do is we dissect a real financial plan and we uncover the flaws or what we call pain points so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their own planning and investing. And you worked on a case recently. Why don't you give Bob and I the rundown? Sure. So I met with a gentleman a few weeks ago. He's in his early 60s. He's thinking about retiring soon. And his main focus was really leaving something behind for his son and making sure that he was okay in retirement, meaning that he could maintain his lifestyle I and mean, really, you know, that his, his money would outlive him and not the other way around. And I'm noticing here 60% at risk in the markets, which given his age and his time frame, that's actually pretty aggressive given where he is in his life. Did he, was he cognizant of that? He was cognizant. He, so he knew that he was being a little aggressive. I mean, it was interesting. I think that he, he was maybe counting himself short on the projection as far as having enough to retire on. And when we put everything into the 360 portal and looked at the projections and he saw that he was really in great shape, could most likely leave a nice sum for his heirs. Then he really thought, you know, he felt exactly to your point that he was taking too much risk given his time horizon and where he was and what he had saved. You know, Aaron, the thing that stood out to me was that when it came to his fixed income investments, he really had too much, in my opinion, in, in cash or cash equivalents. And that's not going to generate the return he needs to stay retired. Yeah, Bob. That, so one of his one of his pain points recently was he's worried about what's happening in markets. He thinks that this bull run, he thinks that the bull run has gone on too long, and he's worried about inflation and the next downturn being so severe that it'll take forever to come back. So, you know, he didn't want to get in equities, he didn't want to get in bonds, and he's just kind of stuck in cash, not knowing what to do next. Well, that sounds like uh, paralysis by analysis. He, he's predicting inflation's going to go up, stocks are going to go down, and bonds are going to go down. And that's a bad place to be. Well, the other thing too is I noticed today we talked a lot about income. And the nice thing about a portfolio bill that generates a lot of income, regardless of if the market's up or down, we have a lot of volatility lately, that income's still coming in. And on your proposal, you're able to bump his income up by another 20 grand a year. That's pretty significant. Right. That's really significant. And any, any shortfall that he had in his living expenses and he's helping his son out with college and all these things... Um, that income takes care of that. So he's really not having to pull any any principal out of the portfolio between what he has coming in for, through Social Security at retirement and the income that we're able to generate for him. You know, that's what I love about these projections, because you can sit there and you can wonder and, and be scared all day long and try to invest anticipating things that may never happen. While you do these projections, you see if you have the income you need, as opposed to trying to predict what can't be predicted, you control what you can control so that if the bond market does go down, you get a chance to buy more. Stocks go down, you get to buy more. You keep your portfolio balanced and you have the high probability of achieving your goals by staying fully invested. Yeah, Bob, the other thing I love about this is we can really pinpoint exactly where he's allocated and where this money is invested. And what we found was that over half of his investments in equity markets were all in your S&P 500, which is something we probably see 90% of the time. I mean, it's you know I think he's having a rude awakening this last week or yeah. two. Well, it's the, the old saying, too much of a good thing is, a, is not a good thing. And I think that's what's happened is we see this with most investors right now. You probably have too much money in large cap U.S. companies because they've done so, so well, but you live by the sword, you die by the sword because all that stuff that's going up at the same time tends to go down at the same time. And without building some other protection in your portfolio, you can put yourself in a really bad position for retirement. Yeah. Now, if I look back over or my history of investing in the markets, it's these bubbles that really get you. And I, you know, we had a tech bubble in the 90s and, and we have a little one going on right now. The most overvalued segment of the market is technology and bonds. You know, if you're in bond funds, you know, I saw that happen in the 80s and they, they that was a bubble that burst. People lost a lot of money. You know, it can't have all your eggs in one basket. It sounds like he's in two baskets that are overvalued right now. Bob, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, his third pain point, one of his biggest goals was to reduce the amount of risk that he's taking. So we were able to increase his income by over 20,000. And just by diversifying his portfolio and scaling back, you know, such a high concentration in the S&P, we were really able to tie everything together to meet all of his goals and really just show him that, you know, there's a couple steps that he can take to really ensure his financial future. You know, Aaron, it just looks like he did such a great job. Instead of trying to eliminate risk, which he can't do, 
you manage the risk, you manage the volatility in a strategy that's unique to you, the individual, which is unique to this client. Looks like a home run to me, right? Yeah, Aaron, as uh, Bob likes to say, another financial masterpiece. Um, if you're thinking um, yourself right now, this is the kind of review I want to have. I'm thinking about retirement or I'm retired now. I don't know the underlying risk guide of my portfolio. I don't know if I'm diversified enough. I want a stream of income coming in that's more reliable than the markets. Here's your shot to do it. We literally have two slots left. If you have over $500,000 safe for reti retirement, myself, Bob, Aaron Dessen will run for you our total financial master plan. We're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this where we look at everything. All you need to do is bring those statements in. If they came in the mail or print them off the computer, whatever's easier, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data on all your investments. We're going to build for your own personalized financial portal where you can actually view your entire net worth at a bird's eye view. And then we can start looking at all the critical components like this. We're going to look at everything from diversification. You might have your money concentrated in bond funds and large cap tech, but you don't even know it. We're going to show you where all those hidden risks are in your portfolio. So when the market does go down, you are protected and show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan for retirement? How are you going to draw from your portfolio if you're thinking about retiring or retired now? Are you able to increase this income? Are you able to increase this gentleman's income by over 20000 a year? How can we help optimize the income on your portfolio? And we're going to look at fees and taxes. There's a lot of hidden costs in those mutual funds, annuities, life insurance products. What hidden costs are in your portfolio? We're going to show where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce costs, and then optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, determining the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. All you have to do is be one of our next two callers. That's right. We only have two spots left. All you have to do is simply call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or you just call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next two callers, you've saved over 500000 for retirement. Rye, Aaron, and I will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But you won't have a plan. Let's you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. Well, another great show. Aaron, again, that booming voice, that confidence. It's, just, it's, it's always magical to have you on the show. No, I learned from the best guys. <laughs> Obviously, you mean me, not Bob. I'm assuming when you said that. <laughs> we got it right. We got it the first time right. <laughs> well, another great show. And as always, be bullish. <laughs>